One of the most influential ships in Star Citizen, in both lore and in the current gameplay meta, is the classic fighter from Aegis Dynamics, the superb Gladius. This stellar fighter may not be the prettiest, but with a mix of excellent handling, great weapon hardpoints, and a gold standard pass that's much needed by many older ships, the Gladius is one of the frontrunners in the current meta for both PvP and PvE combat. So here's a quick guide around some of the best components to snag across the verse to keep your Gladius ship shape. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to support me and my channel. If you're a new player just thinking of getting the game, use my referral code in the video description below for an extra 5,000 starting credits. Also, feel free to check out my Discord server where we've got a great community of star citizens who are very friendly to newer players. Now then, we've got a lot to cover, so let's jump right into this. For this component guide, we will be going out of our way a bit to make sure we get the very best of everything for this excellent ship, though I will be offering some lower end alternatives along the way if your budget is tight. Keep in mind that after replacing a component, you may be told the ship has an error or not enough power. This can be fixed by manually cycling power to the new components from your onboard MFDs, or by powering the ship off and back on again using the U and R hotkeys. Let's start with the weapons. The Gladius comes equipped with two CF-337 Panther repeaters, one on each wing, and a Mantis GT-220 Ballistic Gatling on the nose. While the Panthers are great for dogfighting, the Gatling just runs out of ammo way too fast for it to be particularly effective in long engagements. So I would recommend swapping it out for something else. The easiest, obviously, being another Panther. You can grab this repeater for 8,925 Alpha UEC at the center mass in New Babbage or Area 18, or for a bit more cash at a variety of other locations. I personally like to use a DR Model XJ3 distortion repeater on the nose, also from the center mass in New Babbage, since distortion damage can really mess someone up if you're hitting them in the right place. This will run you 6,150 Alpha UEC. The Gladius also comes with four size 3 missile racks, which I recommend you swap for MSD-341 racks that you can find pretty much anywhere that shells ship weapons. Fill up these racks with Arrow 1 missiles for some high speed close quarters pummeling. The racks and the missiles together will cost around 4,800 Alpha UEC. With that, your weapons loadout is pretty much complete, so let's move on. Next up is shields, and there's a few different options that work really well here. The 7SA Concord Shield Generator is the cheapest of the top tier shields, but it's pretty weak against distortion damage, so if you want to maximize your ship's defenses, the FR-66 is a great way to go. This shield generator can be found at both Crew L1 and Orison for 18,450 Alpha UEC. Another more expensive option is the Palisade Shield, which has less resistance to distortion damage, but has a little extra bonus resistance to ballistics. This can be very useful against things like railguns, redeemer turrets, and AI ships that like to use ballistics. Found at Baijini Point, Crew L4, Her L3, and New Babbage for 23,200 Alpha UEC, it's a great option. I personally like to use one Palisade and one FR-66 each on my Gladius for a good blend of the two. Moving on to the Quantum Drive, there's pretty much only one option, the Atlas. It's hard to find a drive that allows a fighter to both cross the entire Stanton system in a single tank of quantum fuel without being so slow that you can watch an entire season of The Expanse during the commute. It's sold at Her L5 only for 17,900 Alpha UEC. 
Let's talk a little bit about power plants and coolers now, since these are probably the last components you'll need to upgrade on your ship. Some people say that these components don't actually do anything, which is untrue, as there are some ships that run into problems if you ignore these components after making changes to the ship's loadout. However, they have very diminishing returns past a certain point, as you can go well past the power and cooling quota needed for the ship to run. That being said, the stock power plant and coolers on the Gladius are more than capable for everything to run just fine without upgrading them. I do, however, recommend upgrading your power plant to the JS-300, which can be found for 19,700 Alpha UEC at Grimhex, Her L2, and Orizon. Ignoring the power generation overkill, it has very high resistance to distortion damage, which helps you reduce the chances of having an EMP or a distortion gun knock your power plant out, which is going to cause you to have a rather bad day as your whole ship powers down and becomes very little more than a rather large paperweight should that happen. Finally, we need to consider our coolers. While usually a pretty unnecessary upgrade due to how little of a difference it actually makes, if you want to be a completionist on your Gladius upgrade, grab an Ultra Flow for 27,550 Alpha UEC and a Zero Rush for 16,150 Alpha UEC. This combination gives the highest capacity cooler as well as the fastest cooler for the best of both worlds. They can both be found at New Babbage. With all these upgrades installed, your Gladius is ready to take on just about anything the verse throws at you, except maybe an Idris. Still, this kit gives you a lot of options and is an amazing dogfighter all around. All in all, this little shopping trip will run you around 133,708 Alpha UEC in total. It's a little pricey, but the benefits to performance will be well worth it. Just remember that you don't need to get all of these components all at once, just try to grab what you can afford when you can. Please remember that while these are my personal recommendations of what to put on your Gladius, this is by no means the perfect way to equip this ship. You are free to experiment with what you like to use on your ships, and build them however you like to suit your personal playstyle. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like so I know to make more videos like this in the future. If you have any recommendations for ships I should take a look at next, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the verse.